Goodness, goodness, can you hear me? Oh, we don't have the caller, the producer tells me. So I'll do the question that uh, goodness gave us before we lost his call, apparently. Okay, goodness's question for the viewers at home has to do with an absolute value inequality. It says the absolute value of 2x divided by x plus 3 is smaller than 1. Now, this whole rational expression here is within the absolute value signs. Now, if you guys at home, I'm going to remind you. If we talk about an absolute value of a number, an absolute value is nothing other than a distance. So if I'm here in the middle of the pen and I say my absolute value is smaller than 1, means I can go either one unit that way or I can go one unit this way. But the issue here is I'm in between these two limits. So if I write that mathematically, I can say that if the absolute value of P is smaller than 1, it means that P lies between 1 and minus 1. It cannot go outside that bubble. And that's exactly what I'm going to use in this question. I'm going to say fine. I've acknowledged the fact there's an absolute value. The only tricky thing here is the denominator. So make a point right from the start to remind yourself that x may not be negative 3. Because if x is minus 3, my denominator becomes 0 and I have a problem. Okay, guys, now let's go slowly. If I want to drop these absolute values, I'm going to say that whatever is inside the absolute value 2x over x plus 3 can only take on values between 1 and minus 1. Now, if you look at these two things separately, I've got the rational expression in the middle, I've got the 1 this side, the minus 1 on that side. I now have to split my question, and I'm back to my grade 11 inequalities. Follow on the screen. Let's have a look. I get then that 2x, I'm first of all going to work with that half. I'm going to say, fine, that means that 2x divided by x plus 3 is smaller than 1. Now remember, I've got to combine these two answers at the end of the day. Because my number lies between 1 and minus 1. It's not that it's bigger than 1 and smaller than minus 1. The moment the directions are opposite, I'm working with an or. Okay, let's see. Now this we can all do. 2x, I know I've got to get my one side equal to 0. So I've got to throw the 1 over, which means it becomes minus this denominator, which is then minus x minus 3 divided by x plus 3. I add my like terms, and I end up with x minus 3 over x plus 3 is smaller than naught. Now, you guys, all of you do it in different ways. Some of you use, uses the table, some of you use a parabola to do this. I just use the number line. Okay, some of us, we call it the tic-tac-tic method, some teachers. So let's go for the number line. There's two brackets of which 3 makes that 0, minus 3 will make this one 0. So there's two points on my number line, the negative 3, the positive 3. I'm looking at where it's negative. Now remember, all these x's are positives. So on that side, I'll have a positive, a negative, and a positive. And one thing to watch out for is that this is strictly smaller than naught. So I cannot take on a value of 3, nor can I take on the value of negative 3. Okay, now let's see. Positive, negative, positive. Anything smaller than 0 is negative. So I'm looking at a solution that lies in between those two numbers. Finally, x is smaller than 3 or bigger than negative 3. Now, that's only the first part. I've now worked 
with the right hand side of this in equation. Now I'm going to focus on what's written over here. In other words, the same rational expression is now bigger than negative 1. Let's go for that. 2x over the x plus 3 is now bigger than negative 1. And it's the same thing over again. I have to have my one side zero, so I go and I say, fine, 2x, this becomes a plus 1 multiplied by x plus 3, simply just leaves me with x plus 3, divided by x plus 3, which is now positive. Okay, adding my like terms, I get 3x plus 3 over the x plus 3, which is bigger than naught. Now, here's something interesting. I've got a 3 in each term. I've got 3x plus 3. Now I'm going to remove the 3. And guys, what's nice about it, I know that 3 is a positive number. So when I divide that 3 away, nothing is going to happen. So I might as well ignore it. Have a look. I take out my 3. I've got the x plus 1 divided by the x plus 3, which is bigger than 0. Now, naught divided by 3, nothing happens it's zero. So I'm just going to take it out. I'm going to throw it away. And I'm going to work with what's left. The x plus 1 divided by the x plus 3 must be positive. Run to my number line. I have minus 3, minus 1. And again, it's a strict inequation. It's strictly bigger than. So I cannot have either one of these two values in my solution. Now my x's are positives, there's positives in front of them, so I have a plus, a minus, and a plus. And this is now where it becomes interesting. I'm looking at positives, so it's that way or this way of minus 3, to this side of minus 3. So x here is bigger than minus 1, or x is smaller than negative 3. Guys, I've got my two solutions now. I've got the solution for the right hand side I have the solution for the left hand side now all that's left because I'm working between these two boundaries it's an and question I must be smaller than minus one and bigger than minus one at the same time I can only be between these two parameters so I've got to take my two solutions and combine them on a number line let's go and do that if you remember, our previous solution said x is smaller than 3, bigger than negative 3. Now, if I take a number line, now, goodness, I hope this makes sense to you at home. 3, I have a minus 1, and I have a negative 3 over here. I'm working with strict signs. I'm working with strictly bigger than, strictly smaller than, so all of these values are excluded, so I put open dots on my number line to remind me of that. Now be careful now. Follow what I'm doing. I'm going to represent this solution at the top here. I'm between 3 and minus 3 excluding both points. So open dot, open dot, I'm anywhere on that line. That's what this is represented graphically. Now I go for the others. X can be bigger then negative 1 runs that way, and x smaller than minus 3 runs to the side. Now, all that's left is for me to check where do these solutions overlap. And the only place that I can see they overlap is right over there. So my final answer would be x is strictly smaller than that 3, but has to be bigger than minus 1. Folks, that solution satisfies both of these. It's smaller than 1. It's 2x over x plus 3 smaller than 1, but at the same time bigger than minus 1. Okay, now remember that was based on a basic principle.